I'm not going to entertain your questions. I don't need to engage with you. No, I'm not going to engage with you. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome. This is Tiapostate Prophet. Prophet. I have something fantastic that I want to show and share. A popular Muslim apologist's reaction and despair when he realizes that he cannot defend the absurd claims of Muhammad. Let's watch it together. What I said in my video is, yes, Farid responds, who said, we cannot understand what Muhammad means by the sun goes under the throne of Allah at night because it is a metaphysical matter. And what does Farid talk about in his response? The sun prostrating, that's a metaphysical matter. Did I talk about the prostration of the sun? No. I talked about Muhammad's words about the sun going under the throne of Allah. Fair enough. I misspoke the movement of the sun isn't a metaphysical matter it has to do with our perception of the sun <laughs> in the hadith muhammad very clearly says that the sun literally goes somewhere to its setting place where it then asks for permission to rise again and allah gives his permission so it rises again from its rising place and one day it will not be given permission and it will go back to its setting place and will rise there in the west that is not a matter of our perception that's a dumb excuse um as for the prostration of the sun that is indeed a metaphysical matter that we do not understand okay. according to these hadiths and according to the quran the sun has a rising place and a setting place and the sun travels from its rising place to its setting place every day uh, ridvan here is pointing out that the sun has a rising place and a setting place right and he doesn't mention the rising place and setting place in the Quran. So where does the sun set according to chapter 18, according to Ridvan? It's literally sets in the muddy spring. As again, it's a video I dealt with previously. Oh, very funny. He deflects from this topic by arguing that according to the Quran, the sun goes and sets in a murky spring and that I take this literally and do say that according to the Quran, the sun sets in a, in a muddy, muddy spring, but that this would contradict with Muhammad's hadith, Muhammad's narration, that the sun goes to its resting place to prostrate under the throne of Allah. First of all, I don't care where the sun goes according to the Quran or the hadith. What I do care and what this is about is that according to Muhammad, the sun goes somewhere when exactly and how exactly does the sun go somewhere i've never said that the quran is consistent i never said it makes sense i wouldn't secondly thinking of the magical world of the quran and of islam it is not inconceivable to me that the quran would imagine or that muhammad would imagine a world where the sun does go into a muddy spring and that it's where its resting place is and then it goes to the throne of allah i don't care about the dynamics what we need to focus on here is the topic why does muhammad say that the sun goes somewhere and when exactly does it go? What's very funny is that one of the Quran verses that I showed here on the screen, which is chapter 36, verse 38, actually says, affirms, that the sun runs towards its stopping point. To be accurate, it literally says toward its resting place. So the Quran is in agreement with Muhammad that the sun does indeed, not metaphorically, not from our perspective, it runs toward a resting place this hadith is a very authentic hadith these hadiths clearly disprove muhammad's knowledge of the world around us so what does that mean what does that mean to Ridvan? this hadith is a very authentic hadith it's undeniable this hadith is a hadith of ibrahim bin yazid bin sharik taymi from his father yazid bin sharik taymi from abu dhar from rasulullah i accept this as authentic these narrators are reliable to Ridvan, this is hearsay that cannot be accepted however he will accept these reports why because he can use it against islam that's it and he, he is already realizing that he cannot properly respond to the point which is why he is distracting with something completely unrelated and also a stupid objection it does not matter what i think about these hadiths about their validity i don't think we can reasonably trust the hadiths we can probably get a little bit of an idea of who muhammad was and what kind of a guy it was these hadiths that we are talking about are authentic by your islamic standards i could even go ahead and believe that muhammad never existed that's completely besides the point you accept them as authentic and you should be able to answer the contents of the hadith so when muhammad says that the sun goes somewhere under the throne of allah or wherever it is you see how he's already getting uncomfortable don't you to its setting place. How do we explain this? How does the sun go somewhere? Where does the sun go? Answer this question. Stop distracting. 
Second major issue: When exactly does the sun go wherever it goes? You can say that this is metaphysical. The throne is up, is above everything, so the sun doesn't have to go somewhere. But why does it go somewhere, according to Muhammad? And when exactly does it go? There is no time. There is no sunset. There is no night in the context of the sun. The sun is always there. There is no time that the sun actually goes somewhere and comes back. This hadith is clearly false. It clearly makes an absurd assertion that is demonstrably false, scientifically false, extremely ignorant, suitable to the seventh-century Arabian knowledge of the cosmos. This is what you need to. Explain. Let me answer your questions in regards to when the sun is setting. Well, the answer to that question is. I simply do not think that it is relevant to the to the point at hand. I mean, <laughs> as for the question of where is it setting, the answer to that question is it it is it is something that do, uh, does not uh, that I do not think about that I do not concern myself. That is what I'm trying to tell you. You see it, Ivan. So what does he do? He looks pretty mad about the thing that I'm talking about. The questions, the very simple questions that I'm asking to him, to the Muslim apologist who is supposed to clear the doubts because that is his major mission here. He even said in his uh, previous video that he loves to respond to me and loves to refute me because he loves beating a dead horse. I love engaging with you. I mean, I've put out 50 videos. I'm putting out more. That's because I enjoy kicking dead horses when they're down. And what does he do immediately here right now? He simply responds to them with such a childish attitude by playing a clip of me saying this is irrelevant or something that I don't think about. What Farid could have done here is to simply answer the question because there are many Muslims who rely on this, who wait for the information. But what does he do? He doesn't know how to answer, which is why he deflects from it and gets angry and plays these clips. I don't need to engage with you if you're not going to engage with me. I love engaging with you. I don't need to engage with you. I love engaging with you. I don't need to engage with you. I've put out 50 videos. I'm putting out more. I don't need to engage with you. That's because I enjoy kicking dead horses. I put out my video two friggin years ago and you're responding to what now? Why is he so angry? You're responding to like a five second clip. Complete misrepresentation of what actually happened. What happened is that he made those videos very long ago. I said many times that I don't really want to respond to them because I find those videos ridiculous. Recently he made a video about me. I then made a response video in which I briefly joked how this is the Farid who said that the sun going somewhere at night is a metaphysical matter. And he was upset by that joke and tried to make an explanation. I decided to make a response to it to show how he cannot solve this problem. And what does he make as a response? He makes a video in which he looks pretty disturbed listening to the problem. And then he chooses not to answer the problem, leaving all those people hanging. What's very funny is that he posted three or four days ago that a response to me is coming soon and then that it will be delayed. So, no, I'm not going to engage with you. <laughs> oh, boy. This is hilarious. <laughs> this is like you're discussing, you're engaging in a debate. Your opponent makes a point that completely dumbfounds you and you cannot respond to it. And you're like, uh, I, I, I'm not going to respond to you. I'm not going to engage with you. Go away. First answer all my other questions. Then we can come. To I'm not going to engage with you. No. But hey, I'm a Muslim apologist and I have an answer to everything. Dear Muslim viewers, do you see what's happening? Dear fans of Farid response, do you see what's happening? This is what I mean when I say that this guy is weak, that Muslim apologetics are weak. Everyone sees what is going on. Do you see what's going on? Can you answer the question, dear Muslim viewers, what exactly does Muhammad mean by that? As you can see, Farid cannot answer this question. He gets pretty desperate. Can anybody else answer this question? I'm not going to entertain your questions, even though I've already made a video on the subject and it's currently unlisted. Oh, you have. Why don't you publish that video, Farid? You need to either respond to my video in full or you need to accept the points that I've mentioned as valid. You did not make any points about the sun going somewhere. We are still waiting. He did not answer it in his uh, original video in which he simply said, How does the sun go under the throne? It is a metaphysical matter. All right. 
And right. if you are mature enough to do that, in the same way that I'm mature enough to admit that I misspoke, if you're mature enough to do that, then I will be uploading my video and you can then deal with that argument at your own pace. Dear Muslims, do you see what's going on? Dear everybody else, do you see this? Do you see how he is unable to answer a question and starts playing games instead? A simple question which he could just move on from by saying, eh, the answer to that is very simple, you ignorant person. It is this and this and this. Now that I have answered your question and you're humiliated, how about you answer to those 50 questions? Wouldn't that be brilliant? Wouldn't he thereby totally shut me up and end the doubts and prove the criticism to be nonsensical? Why does he, when he is pushed into a corner, resort to saying, I'm not going to engage with you. I'm not going to respond to you. No, I'm not going to give you an answer which will take me five seconds probably. No, I will not give you an answer. No, yes, I have made an answer and I will publish that answer once you have done all these other things. How pathetic. I will make a response to the 50 videos that you have made about me. And you will forever be unable to answer what Muhammad meant when he said that the sun goes somewhere at sunset and comes back in the morning. Unless you accept that this hadith is false, which will lead to your entire religion falling apart like a house of cards. That Muhammad did not know that he made a false statement, which should make us question why we even trust Muhammad. Or you could say, the sun does go somewhere. The earth is flat. In fact, I think this is your only way out of this situation. At least you can save yourself with that while making yourself look very stupid, but you will not save your religion. This, everybody, is what Islam is. This is the intellectual level of Islam. Thanks for it, for showing that to us. And no, dear deniers, I will definitely not stop at this. I will respond to all of his videos and show to everyone how ridiculous your Muslim apologist guy is and how ridiculous Islam is. Do yourself a favor and wake up from this nonsense. Thank you for your service, Farid. Stay away from Islam.